video I wanted to talk to you guys about dry fire practice and drills that you can do. So first thing I want to do is define dry fire practice and compare it to course of fire. So drills are basically it's something you do over and over and over again to learn something and you do it thousands of times and kind of to give you a historical example if you know any uh, if you've read any Civil War memoirs what did they talk about? They talked about marching, combat, camp life and drill. Drill was a big part of their camp life. They spent more time in camp and on the march than they did actually fighting. And during this drill, they would spend all day doing it. And then they would get intermission with, uh, every now and then they would get intermission with uh, meals, but they would spend hours and hours and hours doing the same thing over and over again. For instance, their firing sequence. They had a long firing sequence. They had to load the individual components in there, ram it down properly, on command, and then they had to have everything lined up properly because they would give them a command to load, they would have a certain amount of time to do it, and they needed to do it automatically because stress of combat, yada yada. And then also maneuvers. When certain sounds were given or certain commands, they needed to know exactly for their exact point in line, or maybe they're um, basically knowing how to maneuver if they're at another point in line. Uh, say you take casualties and you got to move up in the ranks. So you know how to maneuver like to the oblique or just make a complete turn to the left as in, you know, rolling up someone's flank. Stuff like that. You, they would drill that. And they would do it over and over and over again until it's instinctual. There was no real need for cognitive thought. They were These drills are for basically eliminating the need for cognitive thought. These are things that are and just something that you automatically do. So, now, courses of fire. Courses of fire are basically taking these drills and giving you something cognitive. Uh, so you're being put under a timer and you're having to think while you're applying these basic skills. So, uh, things like uh, the one to five. It's a one, it's a one to five course of fire. You, one round here, two rounds here, three rounds here, four rounds here, five rounds here. Are you going to drill that so if you have multiple targets, that's how you're going to engage them? No. It's teaching you to understand and still have cognitive function while you're going through your firing sequence, you're, you're doing your recoil management really well, and it's testing you. And it's putting you under a timer to get, add more stress. So, that's a good example that we're not doing drills. These, this is not a 1 to 5 drill, this is a 1 to 5 course of fire. The Bill Wilson course of fire? It's six rounds as fast as you can into a target. This firearm holds more than six rounds. Some people are going to require less, some are going to require more. All that's doing is testing how fast you can deliver six rounds on target in a certain area. It's putting cognitive function of, of basically having to sit there and control it and control your emotions and stop at six rounds or just load six rounds. It's, it's all about inserting cognitive function and combining cognitive function with this, what's supposed to be instinctual. Good recoil control, a good, good draw, and basically being able to cognitif cognitively cut it off when you need to or start it when you need to. So with all that said, that's the difference between drills and courses of fire. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some drills that you can do that are going to help you. So this is basic, this is basic stuff that you're gonna be doing all the time. And this is my opinion. This is just in my experience. I think that these things can be used and I'll go ahead and identify one of them that I think actually will be kind of controversial for some people. So first thing is I think that reloads should absolutely be instinctual. It bugs the heck out of me when I see people doing this and they look at the gun. You're inserting a cognitive function into something that universally does not need cognitive function. So. The, the reason for that is low light. In low light, when you are uh, shooting in low light, it's good not to have your weapon light on or your hand light on so you're not sitting there flashing around. If you're in low light, if you can't identify your threat, how are you going to identify if where your magwell is and stuff? It should just be body to body contact. You should be able to do it at any angle. And that's what I was drilled on when I was in the military 
and I was drilled on it afterwards, but for some reason it's become a big thing to look at your gun while reloading. For some competition shooters, it doesn't matter, but for people that are serious, it, it really doesn't do that much. Like, if you have to look at the gun because there's a, a round sticking out and you fail to be able to reload it, yeah, a quick look and a diagnostic and then corrective action, yes, but you only do it when you need to. You don't make it a habit to do it unnecessarily. So, rant over on that. So, next thing is getting in and out of position. So, um, you might want to practice mm, going from standing to prone, prone to kneeling or standing to kneeling, you know, whatever. Getting in and out of these positions, maybe unconventional positions. So the next thing with positions is where it gets controversial. Barriers. I think that it should be something that you drill is working around the barriers, working left, right, up, down, you know, whatever, in different positions. Uh, and being able to look at something and knowing how to manipulate that without any real cognitive um, input. And what I mean by that, to be more specific, is to, to know exactly how far out you are going to go, how far out you need to go, practicing over and over again, going just far out enough to deliver your shots and leaning with only this part and not your feet. And that's going to, that, that can actually build a good amount of balance, muscle in areas that it needs to be, and stuff like that, good self-awareness. And I think that that is something that you should absolutely be practicing, and that that would be something you make, make habitual. So, then the next thing is, obviously we're going to practice the firing sequence. Grip, sight picture, and trigger trigger control and stuff like that. We try to practice recoil control with our grip, but yeah, you can only really do that in a live fire. So the next one is drawing. I like to practice drawing in a universal uh, concept. I'm always gonna have my pistol in one certain area. So, and yeah, just moving the garment out of the way and drawing the pistol, explode out of the holster and then going into it going into the firing sequence, that's something that I drill. I make it I make it a habit. So be intentional with everything you're doing and should be good, right? So the next thing is uh, malfunctions. So I, I don't know many people that are like me and actually enjoy malfunctions uh, because for me, with some of the guns I've had, I actually got really good at locking the slide back, ejecting, the uh, magazine, inserting the magazine, and charging the gun. I got really good at doing it really fast, or being able to identify it and be able to correct it and take what some people call shortcuts or non-doctrine-based, you know, methods. But I've had a lot of practice with it. It doesn't really bother me that much because it, it's only ever really happened with practice ammunition. So, and the last one is the thing that you should be doing all the time non-negotiable, practicing safe handling. Not pointing the gun in a direction of another person or pointing it at something that you shouldn't be pointing it at, but, you know, all within logic, of course. I mean, dry firing, you know, obviously making sure that we're checking the firearm and making sure that we are empty on ammunition every time we go to you know, pick up the gun or mess with it. If it's been 30 seconds since I checked this gun, I like to, I like to check it over, which basically this is the best way to do it, lock it back, and yeah. So I like to constantly check it. It's a good way of building safe gun handling skills. And that's something you can drill into yourself and new shooters as well. It's a good thing to get used to is, okay, so remove the source of ammunition, rack it, lock it back, and check it and keep it pointed in a safe direction. So, yeah. And then one last time, check it before you actually go into dry fire. So, that's my, that's my little rant on drills. And some people are gonna agree with uh, things that I think are gonna need to be drilled or should be drilled. And others are gonna, you know, disagree. They're gonna think that courses of fire should actually just be named drills. But in my opinion, words matter. If you get upset over someone calling this a clip, 
but you call the 1 to 5 a drill, or the SAS course of fire a drill, or something like that, or whatever, <laughs> then, yeah, or the Mozambique course of fire. The Mozambique course of fire is a cognitive input. Two rounds to the chest, that's just to summarize putting multiple rounds into the chest and somebody stops. And then you're evaluating, you're like, oh, they're not done yet. So yeah, it's a course of, it's actually supposed to be a course of fire where you're actually intentionally evaluating your target even though it's just paper. It's getting you used to going, you know, to the head intentionally. So, with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below and you guys have a good one.